and maybe get some spoilers for what's coming up. All right, first up, we've got Jeff Loeb. to the characters and the relationships between the characters, especially sort of exploring the backstory, why are these people the way they are, the emotional uh, depth of the characters, where they're coming from. Those were our favorite episodes, those were the episodes that our fans responded to the most. And so this season, uh, we really set out to focus on that and emphasize that. And what was interesting was, initially when we talked about that, we were sort of like, okay, so, Maybe not, maybe we'll sort of de-emphasize the powers or whatever and really emphasize the relationships, but what we found, which was really exciting, was when we really focused on the characters and we really focused on making like, okay, this is going to be this character's story, this episode is about this character, really delving into them, it made all the power stuff more exciting, it made the fighting better. And so that was the really exciting thing to see. I mean, I think the other thing that, that happens on any show, and, and it's always the hardest thing about doing the first season, which is, you know, Matt and the incredible writing team can write the world's greatest scripts, but it all has to go through the machinery of making the show, and also ultimately bring together a cast that's going to be able to deliver on that. And I think one of the things that we really found, and I think the audience found, was that, you know, people that are up here on the stage and the rest of the cast as well, that how they connected it, what they were really good at it, and where were the places and what were the matchups, and then how can you make those matchups even more different than that kind of thing. And, and I think it really is a testament to how talented these people are and how great it came across because of you know, all of you out there loving all of them, it really comes from a place of them being able to put across terrific actors that are doing terrific shows. Yeah, that's the thing. Most of these people are really talented. <laughs> I can't say it all, I'm I don't want to look at anyone. He tries so hard. The, the, the thing is pretty. The thing is pretty. Anticipation. <laughs> well, that is, that's the most best thing is about a show going into the second season. You've introduced us to the world. You've given us a taste of who these characters are. Now you get to go really deep and really start to explore their relationships. Um, and I want to tell you that during the trailer, um, this young lady right here, um, the, when they were showing some of the powers, her reaction was that she was just like, <laughs> and then kept it that way to the very end of the trailer. So, I feel like they're on your side. Yeah. Um, so hot, she must have enough. So, I want to ask, uh, watch, re-watching the season, did you guys ever imagine, when you were putting these stories together, that like Sentinel Services would actually look so eerily similar to what we see in the real world? <laughs> I mean, it's... An allegory for sure, uh, but I guess without being too political, I'm just very glad that we have a show that challenges you to um, think about your place in the world, your responsibility to bring a voice to the voiceless, and how to find compassion for those that you don't understand. Um, I think we do it in a cool way, um, and there's definitely like a supernatural element to the gifted, but we are dealing with some very real stuff. Word. <laughs> And you guys, you guys had a storyline where Link was going to discover a facility that had children in cages, correct? Uh, yeah, it was, it was deemed, it was maybe a little much. Children in cages, like, did, would that really happen? <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of 
Yeah. So <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah, we didn't end up uh, we didn't end up doing that. Maybe there were other reasons as well, but it was. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, the truth is actually, um, it, it's interesting looking to, uh, and you know, I mean, just when you think about the X Men uh, universe classically, it was it's always been an allegory, and one of the things that we really focus on is what are we saying about our world today? And also kind of trying to have sympathy for um, all perspectives and understand that you know the people who are on all sides of an issue have a perspective and they're human beings and they're trying to do something. And, and so that's been a big part of, of what we do. But a lot of it is kind of, sometimes I'll, I'll have conversations with writers where I'm like, okay, well, we need to remember we're not in the 19 in the late 60s we're not this isn't germany in 1938 let's write stories that are relevant to the united states and the world in 2018 and, and so it, that's what we're trying to do and really the, the sort of the best marvel stories are ones where you take the situation that, that is happening out there in quote the real world you put it through the marvel prism and it comes out as a kick-ass action adventure Epic show. It's got great characters, love and humor, and all of those things. But it, and if that's what you get out of it, great. But if you also happen to look at it and go, "Hmm, that makes me think of another situation that's actually happening right now to people that I know," it, it is. I mean, that's been like distill the expert down into one word: it's tolerance. Hmm. And and it has always been that way from the very beginning. They they protect mankind that fears and hates them. And so that's the spirit of the show in so many ways. And, and I think that's what Matt has really captured in the bottle. And I think what you guys have probably responded to and really cool powers still stuff. <laughs> um, so let's talk about that trailer because it gives us some, some stuff, some information, um, <coughs> gives us a time jump. We're several years, we're several months down the, the road. We're in a new town, we're in a new location, correct? We are. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to hear from the actors, from each of you going down the line, where can we find your characters when we come back? Um, when you leave Warren, Bossy, Jen, um, her and Andy have just killed many people. They have tried Fenris for its full potential for the first time. Um, and I think that that leaves Warren desperate to connect to her brother in a good way when you and we last, um, we definitely am going to the dark side, so it's hard for her to relate, but it also gives her potential to build herself up. And I think that when you lose something in life, you gain something too. And she has to fight for herself and fight for her brother because she wants him back. And she wants him back on the same team as she is. All right. Uh, let's see. Well, the Frost had a really successful end of the season because we got to take this lady to the dark side. Uh, so that was chose really to go to the dark side. She chose, but it was like a pretty heavy-handed invitation. Uh, so it's kind of fun. We get to know more about the Hellfire Club, um, and as we saw a little sneak peek of um, Miss Grace Byers, who has joined our show this year, we get to uh, explore our relationship, um, and also we get to know a little bit about the sisters. They're very different this year. Uh, lots of tension between them, and uh, yeah. Between myself. Between myself. Me, myself, and I are really at odds. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, when we come back, do you still have muscles? Thunderbird, yeah, he's still, he's still <laughs> possibly yeah, he works out a little bit. Still have trouble putting on your t-shirt. <laughs> Let me get rid of that. Uh, no, he's, uh, he's in a bit of a, a questionable place, um, feeling like he's failed uh, the mutant branch of the underground in Atlanta since it felt dust after incineration. Um, so he's questioning, you know, his, his leadership role, um, and we'll delve into that as, as the first few episodes unfold, but on a more positive note, he's really hot and heavy with Blink after six months of... <laughs> I like to call it cupcaking. Cupcaking. So, <laughs> swings and roundabouts. <laughs> so that'll be good. Um, what's great about this series for Eclipse is that he hasn't been able to play grumpy yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> you actually get to see him under some distress. Right, uh, good ground. Uh, no, not, I mean, you, find, you pick up the clips and obviously he's lost uh, the things that matter to him most. Um, not only is the underground really struggling and he's played a part in, in that demise, but uh, the woman that he loves uh, and uh, his unborn child uh, are nowhere 
there and actually actively, actively trying to, uh, because of a difference in ideology, actively trying to evade him. Uh, that, from what I can tell and from what I've tried to do, must do terrible things to a man. So I think uh, he's even more, of a, uh, uh, he's even more incessant and uh, uh, determined and raping, if you will, in, uh, in his quest, which is to, to, uh, to right the wrongs and to fix the family. Um, and, and that's when we find him, he's uh, sort of a, uh, further down the line, a six months older, more jaded, uh, damaged, but trying to hold it together, but individual. Pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, um, when we find Polaris in season two, she's been six months, she's very, very pregnant, nine months pregnant. Um, With my baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take credit where I can. Um, uh, you know, and she's struggling with missing Marcos. I mean, she's they, they created a, a, a mutant together. They created a, a being, a person, um, and that's terrifying and, and, and hard. And she's really just scared about um, the labor, as you saw in the trailer. Um, mutant labor is different than, <laughs> than it is for humans, and because she controls metal, um, she doesn't want to die. So. Uh, Yes, so cupcaking and then also. Uh, <laughs> what is cupcaking? Cupcaking is like when you're cozying up with your partner, you're cupcaking. Is oh, that's cupcake. interesting. What do we call that? Cuddle though. He does not eat <laughs> cupcake. <cuddle. laughs> He's never eaten a cupcake. What are they so, saying? Yeah, right. That's my nickname for him is cupcake. That's the only cupcake I've been. Um, so even though she has found like has found some like sort of normal routine in terms of her love life, like I feel like it's the only stable thing in her life, they're just trying to get back on their feet in terms of the mutant underground. So they're still doing their missions, there's there's still mutants in need of help. And I feel like she's finally settled into her place, which is later questioned um, with the Morlocks. Yeah. Too late. Um, <laughs> uh, the Morlocks. And so there's there's a different mutant group that she uh, seems fascinated by. Um, Reed, when we last saw him, has obviously found out that he was a mutant and that it was stopped when he was 15. He didn't know that. His father was a scientist and he stopped the, the X gene within him from developing. Uh, then he finds out that his family have this gene, and then of course he finds out that he was possibly going to be a mutant, and I think on some sort of deep level, there's, his destiny has been taken away from him, and, and he will in some way sort of, in order to try and find the family, and to try and bring the family back together, and Andy, who is on the run, will sort of delve into his father's past to try and unlock what he really is. Um, thus, you know, creating more and more secrets within the family that they, uh, that he's been desperately trying people to, to tell people not to keep secrets, and yet he finds himself in a situation once again where he is keeping stuff from his family. Right, and one of the, one, I think for a lot of people, one of my favorite things um, was how lovely you guys balanced the mutant stuff and the action stuff with the family moments and these very, very lovely personal feeds. I mean, read uh, the stuff with Wes and, 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 and Natalie and, and the, um, even Jamie had the moment with the, with the, the mutant in the, the underground. <laughs> you, you stop um, kind of like the, propuls the, the propulsion to tell the stories of these humans. Um, and for people who I think maybe at some point in their lives maybe felt like mutants to watch these very real characters interact and connect and soften. Um, I feel like that's probably the heart of the show more so than even the big stuff. I think that personally, yeah, I think we all feel, I think one of the things that Matt's been, you know, with the writers working on is the idea that, you know, own the, the big explosions and everything that we can do that's really exciting uh, with the powers and everything only means something if you care about the characters. We want you guys to care about the characters and that happens on an emotional level. And once we enjoy the emotional level and we can see what's happening with the stakes of race and, and everything means more. And there's a, there was a really lovely moment that I remember so fondly was that, that Reed and Caitlin were, um, they were still affectionate. 
even in like living in this, this situation and their kids are, you know, mutants and the world is basically coming to an end, they were like, they were still comfortable with like hugging and kissing and all that. You know, and the, it's almost like the younger couples could learn from that. That was an improv, which is weird, was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, there is a funny thing about that. In the first season, the sets, the way the sets were built, uh, I couldn't be there for part of the set being built, so we started shooting kind of before I had seen the exact arrangement of the sets. And so at one point, we were writing a scene that was more or less, you know, kind of a love scene between Reed and Caitlin, and I got a little bit of feedback about it, and no one actually kind of just straight up told me they're sleeping together like three feet from their children. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally, the bed's like right there. You can't really see awesome. it on screen, but it's just, and, and then like when you wrote three feet beyond, beyond that is another couple. And then she yes. was like, oh, okay. We're maybe. a very close family. <laughs> <laughs> there are no secrets. That's the thing. <laughs> um, Blair, uh, John feels to me like he is the, he's the classic hero figure. Um, yet he is so broken inside, and so vulnerable, uh, and it's been really great to watch him kind of come to grips with that. Um, will we see him kind of grow into his heroism? Uh, yes, but I think he'll get, he'll get even more of the broken side. Um, I feel like he's kind of held up this uh, soldier-type resilience, you know, to, to hide his feelings and putting on a good face for the group, but um, as we keep unraveling and after the separation of, of the family and the team, uh, you know, just, it weighs really heavy on it leading into the second season. So, uh, you know, he struggles with it getting worse before it gets better. So I'd, I'd have to ask Matt if he's going <laughs> to come into his heroism at some point. So for those of you who know the comics, uh, the big question in the back of his mind is always, <laughs> Am I going to get on a plane and tear it apart and die? Yeah, I'm going to fly always looking to turn that page and see, oh, there's a plane in the air. No planes. <laughs> All right. Okay, Natalie, um, Lauren is kind of shaping up to be kind of this really nice mixture of, you know, her father's, you know, his sensibility and his, his drive and her mom's compassion. Um, where would you like to see her head and how that she's, you know, has this divide with him? I mean, I think Lauren has known about this power for a long time, so she was pretending to be someone for a pretty much a majority of her life. Um, but I mean, in the new season, we have different groups. We have the Morlocks, we have the Purifiers, and we have the Hellfire group, and then our group. And I think that there are many perspectives of being a mutant now. Um, but I, I think that she's still just trying to figure out who she is in her little society. Um, but I just want to see her grow more powerful. I think that we were kind of discussing in the first episode. Uh, you hear her talking about how her power can be used in different ways, incorporating water, stuff like that. Come on. <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely love to see her just kind of run with that a little bit, but also um, figure out what's happening with her brother and hopefully connect back with him. Um, kind of see where that takes us. Okay, Sean. Yes, sir. So. Marco is um, probably the most volatile of them all. He has <laughs> just, yeah, very good. Um, he has probably the most tension, the most uh, heavily invested into this idea. But given his kind of temper um, or you know his his volatility, what are the chances of him breaking loose from from the underground and really maybe starting even his own group? Those are some fighting words. Uh, there is, uh, the, 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 the joy of playing Marcus is that uh, I can lose my mind and at no point get told off for it. Um, but he's, he's a very volatile person, he's a very passionate person. I think a lot of our powers manifest in our emotional states and, and uh, what he has within him is the ability to find light in the darkness and darkness and all the light. Right? So, um, but he, um, yeah, uh, but uh, he's, he's I think what happened last year, I, to, we talk, I talked to Matt about this before the second season came out, um, was the fact that we've seen him be so erratic. He's gone behind people's backs and done the dangerous thing in, 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 in the hope of his noble quest, which is to you know, save one from, uh, from the civil services when they captured her, or to save other people. But he goes behind John's back and gets people in trouble because of it. I actually think um, that there's, a, there's an opportunity for him to go the other way. Find strength in. Firstly, he has to step up in more of a leader 
was before uh, the virus is gone. Uh, and I think him and John share that burden, they help each other, so same as we do actually. Uh, but um, I don't, uh, the closer it gets to the pregnancy, the harder it is for him to maintain that. So he, he, he's, getting, he's getting pretty determined again. And, uh, and, uh, and he might get a bit too erratic, but it's all in the name of, in the name of love, question <laughs> mark? <laughs> love. Yeah. Uh, he is very erratic, but, uh, but, he, but he knows when to attribute it. Okay. Uh, Emma, first of all, how does it feel to be 25 stories tall outside? <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah. What, did you, what went through your head when you saw that rap on the hotel? I was like, ah, who is that? She looks so scary. And then I was like, oh wait, that's me. And then I was like, that's unfortunate. <laughs> no, I obviously was very honored. I was super cool. Um, you know, I think it's it's great that Sean and I represent the show this year here. Um, that's really exciting. I think we. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the blue, not mine. No, I just think why. I just mean like I think we represent the two you know polar sides of the political views in our show, and I think that's that sucks that we're a couple and having a baby. But um, you know, yeah, I saw it. I was scared, shocked, surprised, honored, all the feels, all the feels. All the feels. Um, at Blair's day, she much, so much has been made about her parentage. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll find out some more about it going forward, but given what she does know about what her father may have been or could have been, um, how do you think that's going to affect her role as a parent? Look, she's my hero in every way, and that is terrible. She hates it. <laughs> Are you clapping? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and of course she hates her father, resents him for making sacrifices. Um, you know, to go save a race of people. Uh, and, and to a young girl, that doesn't make sense to her. She's thinking, why do a man be happy to do this? But now that she's a parent, she's understand. She, she gets what the opportunity costs. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, she understands uh, that you have to make sacrifices when you've been given this, no pun intended, this gift. Um, so to her, it's becoming clearer that maybe her dad wasn't such a bad guy, maybe they're exactly like in every way, and she can't stand that. But at the same time, it makes her who she is. So, right. uh, Jamie, so Blink is, uh, I, I, if I were to put the family, you know, at a table, I'd be like, well, Blink is kind of like almost the peacekeeper, almost the, like, she's the one who kind of pulls them together, keeps, like, I always felt like she was pretty, like, solid. She was the one, like, I want her to mentor Lauren. Are you sure? I yes. do. You was me? I'm yeah. sitting right here. You are terrifying. <laughs> Your character was terrifying all season long. And I can't wait to see what demon baby she has. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be pretty volatile, this is it? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh my god, half me and half you. We're terrible. Yeah. And by the way, we have that baby in the special effects trailer. And every time I step on a trailer, it scares the living crap out of me. Well, okay, can you give us an idea of what it looks like? And why are you stepping on it? Baby, step, no, step in the trailer. Oh, okay. No, I'm gonna on a baby. Um, so but they were painting it, so it's just like made of silicone, it's mold, and it's just, it looks pretty realistic. It's terrifying. It has like green hair and Well, just to be clear, it's mostly played by a real baby, so when you guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you guys see the, 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 the show, they'll be like, oh yes, my yes, god. Yes, yes, but we have... It's the greatest effect now. It's come so far. <laughs> I've, I've, I've also to add to that, I haven't met this baby yet, I've only worked with the word creepy dead baby doll. Anyways. <laughs> Um, so do, do, would, do you think Clarice could, you know, kind of take Lauren under her wing and really help her develop her skills and, and understand how to be with them? Yeah, you know, I think Blank in season one was just kind of finding herself. Like, she was, you know, she'd fight or flight, she would always run, she would always flee. Um, and that's kind of, that was kind of her MO, and I feel like now that she's decided to put down roots, um, she realizes that Lauren does need some sort of guidance, so in her awkward, weird way when she tries to provide that for her, so... Yeah. But I think it's important, like, Blake has her own issues this year. Oh, yeah. She's really... Well, look who she loves! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, are you me? No, we love her. We stand under Blake. We stand under Blake. Also, don't say mean... Don't say... Yeah. Don't, say yeah. don't say mean things to him. He's huge. Yeah, that's true. Um, I didn't know that. So, Stephen, we found out that he had the key and it was stopped, possibly not permanently. Question mark? <laughs> I thought we just saw the trailer? Yeah. So like how long are we waiting? Like, how long do we 
wait for him to kind of say, okay, let's let this go? He, well, I, I think given that there's been a six-month time jump, we, we, he has been hiding this, this thing. And, you know, Matt and I talked at length about how, how this would manifest and how we would, how we would sort of show this thing and, and how it would come to be. Um, but, but he has, he has decided, he, he's, I'm trying not to give any spoilers away. <laughs> I thought um, you were like, we've decided in a certain way. He, you see it quite soon. Okay, all right, okay. Okay. there you go. <laughs> all right, now Skylar, from the Nine Lives of Poe King. Oh, um, okay. We did our first Comic-Con panel together, and it's so awesome to be out here and have you playing three characters instead of one character with Nine Lives. Um, yes, numbers is a theme for us. Yes, um, and as soon as she showed up, I'm like, do not trust that girl. You do not trust that girl. Yeah. Um, I have heard that you can, at the drop of a hat, come out with whichever character personality you need. Damien, this sounds like a challenge. It is, it is. So what I'm doing right now, I would like you to read these tweets in your various characters. Okay? Bring it on. Oh, boy. Um, so, for the record, we've got Esme, Sophie, Phoebe, ESB, see what we did there? Clever, you know, because we read minds? Um, okay, so Esme, she sounds a lot like me. Um, and we're back. See you meetings on September 25th at 8 p.m. on Fox. And then there's Sophie, who's like really thoughtful and rational, and she gets very, very nervous because her other two sisters are insane. And she wants you to know, ooh, who's gorgeous blonde telepath with this perfect timing? Stopping the various hounds. Ooh, that's not me. And then, like, Phoebe doesn't give a flying shit about anything because she's like a total savage. And she's like, hey, actually, I'm GMT, I'm a huge fan of yours and the gifted. Like, any chance of retweet to get some followers? Um, I'm hoping to have some exciting news on my film soon and would love to get the gifted. And behind it, Phoebes. Yeah. <laughs> Derek Hoffman is even here, and he is destroying my life. And I'm filming it. But Stephen is filming it. <laughs> <laughs> is that, oh god, I hate you. Oh, we just went back. That's so, awesome. so, to keep it as brief as possible, I think we should explain. Uh, last year, uh, me and Stephen were. <laughs> last year, me and Stephen were tweeting uh, a joke. Uh, Derek Hoffman posted a photo of her script and blurred out the name. Of the director, Len Wiseman, who's okay, in the audience, the lovely Len Wiseman. Yes. So, 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 because Fox didn't want um, you guys to know that, that Len, because we were going to re reveal it last year at this exact time, that it was Len who was directing the second episode. Yes. And so, so we blurted it out, and Stephen, uh, Matt, and I joked, it's, "We can't believe Martin Scorsese's doing second episode. Wouldn't that be great?" And uh, Stephen went, "Well, no, it's, it's actually." Martin Scorsese's lesser known brother, Jeff Scorsese, or Hefe Scorsese, and I went, oh my god. Um, uh, I just chimed in with El Hefe, he's great. And then Jeff Scorsese tweeted back. <laughs> <laughs> and so began the greatest yeah. trick ever played. <laughs> the profile picture is the Godfather hand with El Hefe. <laughs> His name is Hefe Scorsese, he's a film school. Uh, uh, graduate from San Diego, or San Francisco. Uh, he made a movie with a real movie poster called Moths uh, that a friend of mine made. And he'd been, yeah, big fan of Seamus for a while and we tweet across the series. Uh, God, I hate all of you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to all enjoy it. Congratulations. Yeah, so, so basically, it ended with yeah, the, so yeah, the entire year of tweets from this guy. That Sean was convinced was a real person. Very real person. I mean, I even went into work and went, no, it's one of the odds that Hefe, El Hefe, Jeff Scorsese, what are the odds that all of these things combine? But wait, tell us how it ends. That's the best part. He pictures, he tweeted pictures of your house. <laughs> yeah, so he tweeted pictures of the house. But the pictures were coming from inside Sean's house. I wish we had Sean had a house. And he was about to call the police. Sean had his house. His hood on, couldn't work out what was happening, was freaking out. He's very scared. 
Yeah. Right. Well, I'm very volatile. So very volatile. Uh, yeah. I, we were watching. We gather at my house on Monday night. I watch the show. I watch the finale. And uh, Hefe still says he's been tweeting. And Derek comes up to me, really uncomfortable, and goes, "Have you seen that this guy's this guy's in town?" And I was like, "No." And he goes, "Oh my God! I found out where they're hanging out. I'm gonna go grab a drink at this bar nearby." There was the name of a bar near my home, which was uncomfortable, or whatever. And then there was just a gradual timeline of him getting geographically closer to where I am. <laughs> Uh, to which no one at all is worrying, <laughs> and I'm freaking out. <laughs> a car pulls up outside of my house, it wasn't even him, and I'm losing my mind. But I, what really unnerved me was he got closer and closer and closer, and there was a photo of me and Stephen standing in the back of my living room watching <laughs> from my porch. And I freaked out and screamed at Stephen, and I went, Stephen, this is not a problem, really cool place. He's like, it's fine, mate, don't worry about it. <laughs> Freaking me out, and then I get a lovely tweet from uh, from Happy Scorsese himself, and it's a selfie of me and Derek standing next to each other. It was Derek Hoffman all along. And Derek had done this what? during during the thing. Jeff had done, uh, Derek had taken a picture of it and then tweeted it from Jeff's account, <laughs> so that that was how Sean found out who Jeff really was. I mean, it's clear we're not having any fun together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's the story. Oh, <laughs> Gave me a massive complex. <laughs> nice. All right. Can't wait for season two story. Uh, we're gonna take some quick questions. We've got a couple minutes left. You guys wanna line up? I don't know what they look like. We have two minutes left after that story. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, my name is Joelle. Um, I wanted to know if Lorcan. I wanted to know what Lauren and Marco's powers for the babies will be. I didn't realize that we're having a baby. Lorna. 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 We don't know the baby's powers. Uh, the baby won't have powers until they manifest. Maybe, uh, hopefully, when they're uh, going to be free. I think, yeah, I think, I think there's a genetically higher chance, isn't it? I'm going to go with metal bending. <laughs> Hot metal bending. They have, they have, they have smelting. 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 <laughs> 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 My superpower is smelting. <laughs> I'm smelting. <laughs> Yeah, so sort of in the Marvel in, in, in the Marvel universe, generally speaking, they don't manifest until puberty, so we won't know for a little while. Except for That's a like a season twenty-seven. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. If watching, and we'll find out. <laughs> Hi, I'm John. Um, you guys spoke on on tolerance, and the show has an incredibly diverse cast, and the theme of otherness is a major part of the universe. So my question is for the showrunners: um, when you're picking or choosing to introduce new characters or ideas. How much of a responsibility do you feel um, in terms of like the diversity factor? Oh, huge. I mean, I think, um, yeah, it's absolutely something we think about all the time. Part of, though, uh, one of the things that we explore a little bit this year, which I think is sort of interesting, is just the idea of um, that traditionally, sometimes in, in the world of the X-Men, um, Mutants can stand in for race or you know difference of various kinds. So one of the things that we've been exploring this year is the idea that both things can exist simultaneously. That there can be that, that race is still an issue in this universe, and also being mutant or not being mutant is an issue. And um, so that's that's something that we definitely think about and and uh, and all kinds of diversity, not just racial diversity, but you know. Um, uh, oh, yeah, all sorts of things, disability, uh, and and so we're we're trying to explore all corners of that universe because it's it's a part of what the show's about and b part of our world. Thanks. Go ahead. Uh, question. This is the last one. Hello, my name is Ryan, and my question is: Is there a way that we could see past? X-Men mutants come into this show? Like, that's you like the best question. Can you, um, Would you like to see? Uh, like Wolverine? No, we don't. Name another one. Do you have 200? Well, actually, I'll tell you this. I'll, I'll tell you this. Probably, I mean, certainly we're going to be bringing in, read your comics, okay? Certainly we're going to be bringing in some really fun mutants from the past. Um, I'd say not so much the, the big movie mutants, because that's really their world, but we've got some really exciting new characters who are straight out of the comics, 
and uh, we're going to be exploring a lot of those folks. And so, um, the deeper you read the comics, I think the, the more you're going to enjoy the people who are bringing you. Quick questions. Will we ever see eventually Whedon again? Yes. yes. All right. Okay, so we have an X-Men lawyer. And you introduced, you, you brought in Kick? Yes. The, the drug. <laughs> yes. The mutant drug. Do you plan on actually like expanding the specialized world of mutant like vices and products and shit that? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, then, let's give it for this panel. Thank you.